Speed is absolutely everything when it comes to video editing in today's climate. It could be the difference between $10,000 and $1,000, getting a client or not getting a client. How fast can you turn around what it is they need turned around? This video is sponsored by ReCut, and this thing is an app that significantly reduces the time that it takes to cut up a video. Let's dive in. Anything where you've got a long clip, there's dead space that you're gonna need to edit out. Let's do it automatically instead of manually. Open up the app. Bam, simple UI, very easy to use, extremely powerful. What I'm gonna do is just slide a talking head right in here. Pops in, loads the waveform, and then what's all this that just popped up? All of these red spots. That's all the silent space below a certain threshold that ReCut found where it's like, hey look, looks like you're not talking here, I think you don't need this footage. I will tell you that even if you just use it for this functionality and now export it to DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut Pro, or Premiere, which is all built into this app, that alone is worth it. So without any adjustments, just completely automatically, let me show you what that looks like. Come up here to export, I'm gonna put this in Final Cut Pro. I have unchecked keep silent segments because I don't want them, though they're easy to bring back once you get into your editor of choice, but hit export, pick where we want it to go. I'll just put it on the desktop. Let me just double click on it. It opens up Final Cut. There's a new project right there in this event, and bam. If you saw that, took the duration of this clip, which was 17 minutes, 23 seconds, down to 10 minutes, 55 seconds, just by cutting out the silence. So what that looks like when you're over here in your editor is any silent clip was completely removed. Now, the way that I make YouTube videos, this is almost completely usable right here. Sometimes when I'll take things a couple times, I'm gonna find the best take of whatever I was talking about at the end of that section, whatever you're using, but you can also go through that process and recut if you want to. I'll just hit plus a couple times to zoom into the timeline. Let's say I wanna remove this clip. While segments is selected, highlight it, hit delete, and then bam, it adds it into the red area that isn't gonna show up in my finished timeline. Similarly, let's say there's a bunch of clips that I wanna delete within ReCut. You can just click and drag across a bunch of segments, hit delete, and it takes them all out. It's not gonna export them into your editor timeline. But again, this is completely editable. So say you need to extend and like use a silent part, you can adjust any of these clips just like you would in a normal edit. Over in ReCut, let's say, one of these red spots is something that you want in. With the segments tool active, you click on that red part, hit delete, and it's gonna bring that back and put it back in your timeline. So because this video is sponsored by ReCut, I got to work with the creator of it and the one who you're buying it from if you buy it, Dave Sedia. And I asked him for like, you know, is there anything else you want me to talk about? Any pro tips or things that you don't see people using that they could be using that makes it more powerful? A pro tip that he gave me is, if you ever pull this in, and let, let's say that, it seems like things are funky, like it wasn't working right or whatever. You can set everything except for threshold to zero and then go down the list one by one and slide up these dials and that will fix almost anything. When it comes to these dials, okay, threshold is interesting. I have it set to auto, which works for me on almost every occasion, but let's say you take it off auto. If you slide this up, you can see the yellow bar down there in the waveform. It's showing you like, I'm gonna be cutting all of this stuff out so you can get a good sense for, especially if you're used to looking at your waveforms, what is actually silenced, what should actually be removed, and what shouldn't be. So you can choose your own thresholds if you kind of become a master at looking at your waveforms, which is cool. Minimum duration, I'm fine with jump cuts in my YouTube videos, but if it's something a little bit more professional or something where you don't want a bunch of jump cuts, you don't want to be cutting out little breaths and spaces, you can bring up this minimum duration so that it's not gonna cut out your very tiny pauses. Padding is the space that it's gonna leave between cuts, like how much how much room do you want on either side of your cut? Left of the clip, so as it starts, and then right of the clip, so as it finishes. Again, I like things to be very snappy, so it's set at zero right now, but you know, you can put this at 0.2 seconds, whatever you want. The short blip slider is, let's say you did a clap to sync your clips up, or let's say you did, hey, maybe you're recording outside, or you just wanna cut out very tiny sounds that happen because those sounds are obviously not words. You can slide this up here and then any of those short blips, it's gonna disregard those and not put them into your timeline. And if you've been sliding all these sliders around, 
and you need to reset defaults, boom, button for it right there, reset defaults. All right, now let's say you're doing what I'm doing right now. You have multiple cameras rolling. You got your screen recorder rolling, you got your A cam rolling, and then you got some sort of B cam rolling as well. You can work with multiple cameras inside ReCut. Clean slate, I've got three clips here. I got my screen recording, I have my main A roll, and then I have this like B cam side shot. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these in the order that I want them to stack up in my editor. So first is gonna be the screen recording, then is gonna be the main A roll. That wasn't the main A roll, so I just went to clips and then selected it, hit delete, um, drag the main A roll in, and then I'm gonna drag in the B cam. There is not currently a way to auto sync these, but since I did the clap in the beginning, it'll be easy to do manually. That functionality is on the way, but for now, let's line these up manually. So again, I gotta make sure that I'm in the clips mode so I can slide these around, drag the clips over to match up with the B cam, just get them close at first, get the playhead there, zoom in with the plus key, and then get them exact. Once they're lined up, the best audio that I have is gonna be coming from my A camera. This would also work if you were recording audio externally. I want the program to be working off of the A clip only, not the audio from my computer or the audio from my B cam. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit this little don't use button right next to screen recording, and then I'm gonna hit the don't use button next to the audio on my B cam. Let's say you keep all of these, like you have this all in place. You don't, you want it to be making decisions based on every single audio source that you have. If you come down here to cut where any track is silent, it's going to individually be looking at all the tracks. It's gonna cut in your overall timeline at every single one of those silences. That generally for this use isn't gonna be what you want. So if you go to cut where all tracks are silent, it's gonna make sure that there's silence in every single track before it makes a cut to cut out a portion of that. Again, that doesn't matter quite as much when you're only using one audio track, but that's just something to note. So just like before, once you've got it all locked in, you go to export, and then when I double click that over on the desktop, I'm gonna bring that into my editor here. And as you can see, if I rearrange my windows a little bit, I have my screen recording on top, I've got my A camera here, and I've got my B camera down below. So now I have those edits made across all of my files in sync, ready to roll right here, multicam clip in Final Cut. Again, it works in Premiere. Again, it works in Resolve. This is going to speed up your workflow like crazy. Affiliate link in the description if you want to give it a shot. For most people, the first time they use it, it pays for itself just in the time saved. Yeah, let me know if you have any questions about it in the, in the comments. Happy to make more videos. Thanks so much for being here.